I have a dream. Then your light will rise in darkness. One day. And your gloom will become like midnight. This nation will rise up. The Lord up. will continually guide you and satisfy Live out your the desire, true meaning of its even in scorched places. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. If we are with them. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. telling you to go forward in ministry. You need to go forward in ministry. Yes, we know the five-fold ministry is to equip men to, and equip, prepare men to do the work of the ministry. Not to sit inside of four walls and not to be a part of something uh, that, that, that stunts your growth, but you need to be a part of a ministry that's going to free you to go forward in what God has told you to do. If he told you to do something personal, you need to do something personal. He's, he's telling me to, do, to go forth in more than just a 3 o'clock service, more than just an annual day. Yes, more than just being a part of some local congregation that, that would not let you go forward in what God has called you to go forward in. Yes, the scriptures let us know that we are not to forsake ourselves, forsake the assembling of ourselves. Yes, the scripture says that. But we have to understand that the, bo the, 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 the body of Christ is more than just a building. The body of Christ is more than just a location. Fellowship has its place. Worship and meeting with the saints has its place. But we need to not abandon what God told us to do personally. So I just want to encourage you today that, you know, that if you're part of a church, if you're part of a ministry, be a blessing to that ministry. Be a blessing to that church. But don't abandon what God has called you to do personally. So I just want to encourage you today. That's the word for the day. Do not abandon what God has told you to do. Let me, let me, let, let's get into the word. And let's, let's listen to what the word has said. I have to say. Along that line I just mentioned. About not abandoning what God has told you to do. Over in Luke 5 the scripture says. Over in Luke 5 the scripture says. And I'm going to start reading that at, at verse 4. Luke 5, 4 it says, Now when he had left speaking and said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. And Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. And nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. If you have done all you could and Jesus has given you a word, you need to say just like Simon Peter said, nevertheless, I would do what you said. And listen what happened after he done what Jesus said. He said, and when they had done this, when they had done what Jesus said, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. When you do what he told you to do, you would enclose a great multitude of blessings and the things that you had that were contained in the past would no longer contain it. And listen to what he says. He say, and they, he, and they beckoned to the other, their other partners. They told the other people that was watching them. They beckoned to the other partners which were on the other ship. 
that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they begin to sink. If you be obedient to what God has put on your heart, he will bless you in such a multitude that you will be able to be blessed and give some of your blessing to others. How many know that God is the God of increase? When he give you what you need, he always give you enough to share with others. You need to keep that in mind. Whatever God has given you, he's given you enough to share with others. That's what the scripture says. When Simon Peter obeyed what Jesus said, when Jesus told him to cast his net on the other side, when he obeyed what Jesus said, the Lord blessed him with fish and so many fish that he was able to share with others. Now that's ministry. That when you're so blessed, you're able to take some of your blessings and give it to others. That's what he's calling us to do. Here in 2010, that's what God is calling us to do. It's to live such a lifestyle that we can be so blessed that we can take the things that God has given us and share with others. That's what he's calling us to do. Listen what happened. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now that's a good position to be in. When God has blessed you so much that you see that you were not worthy of what he blessed you with, and you'll be able to tell the Lord to depart from me. What he was doing, he was saying, Lord, I worship you. If God bless you so much that you can get on your knees and say, Lord, I thank you so much. I worship you. And you don't even, you can't even stand and even stand in the face of God because God has been so good to you. Now all the people would say God has been better to me than I've been to myself. And the younger people would say, I'm so blessed I can't stand myself. That's what God is calling us to do. He's calling us that. He's calling for us to live that lifestyle. But you only get to that point when you do what God told you to do personally. Yes, I've been a part of the church over 20 some years now. I've been a part of other ministries over 20 some years now. I've been a blessing, been used my love God in a lot of places. But until I start doing what the Lord told me to do, then and only then I can see this multitude that Simon Peter saw. Simon Peter was a professional fisherman. But when the, when the power of God came and took that professional fisherman and put the anointing on his life, and when he was willing to be obedient to what Jesus told him to do, he saw his fishing business go to another level. Do you want your business to go to another level? Well, when the Jesus said you to do something, you need to do it. Do you want your family to be blessed? Well, when the Lord tells you to do something, you need to do it. Do you want to see the hand of God on your life? Well, when he tells you to do something, you need to do it. Only when Simon Peter saw that with him doing what Jesus told him to do, he was blessed. And the scripture said he had the multitudes of blessings. Yes, prosperity has its place. Living good, living in a certain neighborhood, living on a certain level financially, all that has its place. But all that really don't matter if you're not being obedient to what God told you to do. For all the peers that may say, all your peers and all your, even some of your church members that may say that, oh, you're not worthy to go far in that area. Or you're not, uh, you don't have a certain title. You don't have to have a certain title to do what God tells you to do. I'm not a bishop. I'm not an apostle. I'm not a pastor. I'm not any of those things that make people may say that you have to be. But Jesus is the one that do the hiring. I don't have to wait to man's approve of me to do what God told me to do. I don't have to wait till man give me a license to do what God told me to do because he do the hiring. The question is, are you doing what the Lord told you to do? Are you doing what the Lord put on your heart to do? You need to get up today. You need to get up this morning and you need to start doing what the Lord told you to do. What dream, what ambition, 
what burning desire that you have in your heart that would be a blessing to mankind that God have told you, told, you, told you to do? Do you have to wait on what people say? No. Do you have to have a certain amount of finances? No. Do you have to be smart and have some kind of degree? No. And I'm all for education. But education with no anointing, you, 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 you will not make it. You will burn out. So, yes, all those things have its place. In the society that we live in, all those things have their place. But you need to make God your number one priority. You need to make the Lord your number one priority. You need to make him first in your life. The scriptures say if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those things that we stand in need of will be added. I want to seek God's face and let him add things instead of me running and trying to add them myself. Because I can have a nice vehicle and don't have nowhere to go. I can have the most expensive bed and can't sleep. I can have plenty of women and no love. Yes, sister, you can have plenty of men and no love. So you need to make Jesus your priority. You need to make him be the one that you call on every day. Trusting and depending on him is where he wants you to be. You're watching Isaiah 40 Ministries. My name is Ricky Woodson. If you need prayer, dial the number at the bottom of your screen, or you can join us on the web. The scriptures say that we, we trust and agree asking anything in his name, he said it'll be done. So you can call that number at the bottom of your screen. We'll pray with you. We'll touch and agree. And we'll believe God and we'll stand in this proxy for you. We'll stand in the gap for you and we'll believe God to bring the past what you desire and bring the past what you stand in need of. You may be abundant as far as drugs are concerned. You may be on prescription drugs, strung out on alcohol. You may have a, a teenager that's, 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 that's living like the devil. You may have a husband that's running around, sister, you may have a... A, a, a spouse that's, that's not treating you right. You may be caught up in homosexuality or lesbian. Whatever your problem may be, I tell you, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ, he'll help you work through it. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to encourage you today. That no matter where you find yourself, left side, no matter where you find yourself in life, God will be there. No matter what you're up against, God can bring you out of it. Yes, you may think that you have done so bad that God can't bring you out. And I've been there. But he said, he who try to save his life will lose it. But he who will lose his life for God's sake will save it. You need to trust and depend on him today. So let us, let us pray. Before we go, we're going to pray. And we're going to trust and, and believe that God will work you through whatever you're dealing with. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for the viewers. We thank you, Father God, for those who are watching this morning. We thank you, Father God, that, that, that you're going to help them work through whatever they're dealing with. May it be a, a, a sexual orientation problem. May it be a, a marital problem. May it be financial problem. Lord, may it be depression. Whatever they're dealing with, God, we ask that you can move in their lives now. Arrest their soul, arrest their mind, arrest their spirit, God. That they may be able to trust and depend on you to work through their problems. We ask now, Father, that you do it. We trust and we trust and agree and we ask that you do it. Help us through the things that we stand in need of, God. We need you. Without you, we can do nothing. We need you more today than we ever needed. Bless that mother. Bless that father. Bless that son, that daughter that may be watching, Father God. Help that mother hold on when those children get rebellious. Make that father press on when things get discouraging. Trust and depend on you is what we need to be, Father God. Bless us today. In the name of Jesus. You're watching Isaiah 40 Ministries, dial the number at the bottom of your screen, or join us on the web, or you can even hit us on Facebook at the, at the information that's at, that's at the bottom of your screen. We love you. We want you to stay in care of And we'll see you next time. My name is Ricky Woodson. Bye-bye.